Hello, welcome back to the Calyx Growing Things Gardens. It's a wonderful day today and it is my pleasure to bring you the final episode in the tomato de-planting exercise. It's 60 days since these tomatoes were transplanted and as you recall, it is an experiment of sorts to compare tomatoes growing in beds and tomatoes growing in pots. They were deplanted probably about five, six inches into the ground so that the roots would be stimulated to, to grow in a much wider area. And I think that actually helped because the growth has been profuse and the reaping, the tomatoes have matured about 10 days faster than we expected. And both the growth in the beds and the growth in the pots are wonderful. But if you recall from the, I think the third episode, we had run into a problem with late blight. And over the last four weeks or so, we really paid attention to pruning any of the diseased leaves making sure that the, the ventilation was still good. And that seemed to have done the trick because it is healthy. We are unlikely to see any. And if we do see a, a leaf, we will remove that as we showed you in that episode. Because as healthy as these plants are growing, we expect that the trees will continue bearing for quite a while. So today is a wonderful day. As I said, this is what we've been waiting for, the first harvest. And what I'm going to do, you see, we're leaving them on the trees to be vine ripened. And what I'm going to do today is just to pick those that are ripe and leave the others for subsequent pickings. And at the end of, we'll, we'll track the yield over a four week period. And at the end of that period, we will show you what we got and tell you the yields. But we won't be doing all of that on camera today. We'll just start the picking, keeping the fruits from the trees in the bed separate from those in the pots. So I guess I can just demonstrate a bit. Picking tomato is much easier than picking sweet pepper. They come off and because it's home consumption, I just pop them off. We will only be selecting those that are ready. I will pick the blush ones too because we will be reaping probably once a week. So these will be very ripe at the end of a few days so let's go with those now we are now 15 days into the reaping period we've done two reaping so far and this is what the plot looks like. You see the leaves are generally yellow. We have fruits at all stages of maturity, but the plants are beginning to look a bit sparse, which is what you can expect at maturity. We are about to do the second to last harvest and we thought we'd show you what the plants look like at this stage. You can see a fair number of green fruits, but most of them are ripe. The leaves are a little yellow and you can actually see spots. So no doubt about it, these plants are coming to the end of their bearing cycle. As they say, all good things must come to an end. And this was a wonderful 12 week experiment. We're now at the 12th week and this is the final harvest. There's very few, we're gonna be reaping today and taking everything there is. We've been reaping now for 26 days. We've done, this would be the eighth time we're picking. It surprised me that we essentially had to be reaping every three days. Um, the crop, as you knew, we took it from planting to this final reaping and we were able to control most of the problems that um, appeared during that time 
what you're seeing here is normal senescence, normal maturity and dying of a plant. It's already taken up all the nutrients that it can find in the soil. It has reached its um, genetically programmed time of maturity and that's what it does. It produces its crop and it will die. So a lot of the spots you see here are symptoms of the aging process and at this point in time of course you expect it and there is nothing much to do than to reap your fruits and dispose of the plants in a proper manner. So today we'll reap and we will also give you the analysis of the crop. What did it produce and any other tips, final tips that we learned that we'd want to share with you. So I'm going to pick, we'll let you know the weights today and then we will discuss what happened and the lessons we've learned. Here are the results at the end of reaping. We obtained a total of 49 kilograms from the 10 plants in the beds and 15 kilograms from the four plants in the pots. This is a total of 64 kilograms of fruits from 14 plants. Not bad, but in terms of the performance of the plants in the beds versus those in the pots, we obtained an average of 4.9 kilograms of fruits per plant in the beds and 3.75 kilograms per plant in the pots. So the plants in beds gave about 30% more fruits than those in the pots. Um, not surprising. I think the main reasons for that is the smaller rooting zone in the pots. Earlier on, we would have shown you that the plants in the pots had smaller leaves and there was evidence of phosphorus deficiency. And from time to time, they showed more moisture stress. So I think the lesson here is next time, we'll use a larger size container than the five gallon pot that these plants were growing in. 64 kilos of tomato fruits from 14 plants. That's an excellent yield under any conditions. And just to summarize how we achieved that, the things we did throughout the 12 week period, we began with beds that are augmented with organic matter. Remember you saw us put in about half a gallon of compost in the hole at planting. We also started out with large six week old healthy tomato seedlings. We removed the lower leaves and we inserted them four to six inches into the soil to maximize the rooting. Thereafter, we made sure that there was enough support for the plants, that they were not coming in contact with the soil, and that as the plants grew, we removed the extra side shoots and any leaves that were impeding the airflow, because airflow is important. Regular monitoring also allowed us to see any problems as they cropped up and to take um, quick action. The, the case in point was the late blight. The other things, we applied the compost tea once or two weeks. We kept a close eye on other aspects of the plants and of course sanitation. Bed sanitation, tool sanitation, we made sure that any tool that we use from one plant to the other or one section to the other, they were sanitized. These practices apply equally well on small scale production, such as your garden, as well as more commercial operations on farms. So there you have it. We enjoyed growing this crop and producing the four videos that showed what was done. We hope it will, they will help you too to grow your bountiful crops of tomatoes. That's it for today. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe and tell your friends about it. And remember to check out the Calix Vocational Agriculture books, which are on Amazon Kindle and BookFusion.com. So until next time, stay safe and bye-bye.